So today we're going to talk about GRACE's solution for continuous thermal monitoring, and it's called the Hotspot Monitor, HSM. It consists of a monitor itself and, and the fiber. This is a direct connect method by which to measure temperature at bolted locations throughout the equipment. So what we do is we pulse an LED light down this polymer fiber and it reflects off this probe tip. What we watch and what's calculated in here are the sophisticated algorithms in here are actually calculating the temperature by watching the light wave attenuation over time. So the benefit to that is actually um, the fact that everything is cured inside this probe tip and it's not necessary to ever have to calibrate it um, or do any kind of adjust to it, adjustments to it once it's installed. So for OEMs, they can boot over it, we can insulate on top of it, and you're still gonna get a really good reading from that location. So the module itself comes in either nine or 18 points. The nine has an LCD dis display screen, so you can see the temperature and you can scroll through you know, all the different um, values and, and uh, settings inside of it. It has um, a uh, ethernet cable, so either Modbus, TCP, RTU, or ethernet IP as a protocol to go to a power management system or an existing uh, a DCS, for example. Um, and also it has an internal relay. This relay will close upon the temperature rise to the lowest level threshold that is set inside the product. The factory defaults are 90 and 105. Uh, so if a temperature, any one of these points of temperature escalate to 90 degrees, it'll automatically close that relay and notify personnel either via um, a PLC, maybe even it goes through a protective relay, for example, a horn or, or some other method by which to get the, the alarm notification to, to the appropriate personnel. Inside the, um, the module itself is an internal web page. And inside that internal web page that's just pinged via an IP address um, is where you would do all the setup for um, if you want to measure in temperature in Fahrenheit or Celsius, um, change your alarm set points. There's two levels of threshold. So you could say one section is for a more critical load. So you'll want perhaps a notification on lower temperature or on uh, the second set is maybe um, a loads that maybe aren't as critical and you can, you can raise those or adjust those as needed. But the most important thing is to make sure that um, the alarm gets to the appropriate personnel and action takes place um, you know, when necessary. The HSM probe probes come in two lengths, either 10 meters or 15 meters. We typically choose to um, to provide, uh, in, the, in the standard kit anyway, is a 10 meter length of fiber. And that typically gets anywhere uh, within your electrical equipment that's needed. Um, we, uh, we kit it in that in that length because um, OEMs, for example, that are manufacturing uh, switchgear or uh, motor control centers or whatnot, 10 meters is plenty to get anywhere you need to go. Typically in field applications, since sometimes it's unknown, the 15 meter is the better one to get. They're all calibrated to the full length, so it doesn't matter if you trim it or not. And speaking of trimming, this is part of the kit. It's an uh, just a plastic encased razor blade. And um, you can just see that you use this to trim the end and make a clean cut and put it in. So another great feature about the fiber, the polymer fiber is the fact that you don't have to have any special skill sets, tools, um, polishing equipment or anything like that in order to get uh, a good clean cut uh, on this plastic fiber. Um, the fact that it's non-conductive allows you to um, Take it in any uh, electrical environment without the risk of interference into control wiring or power wiring. It is um, it's it's effectively invisible inside these um, inside the the conductive environment electrical environments. The attachment of the fiber um, to a bolted location, um, what, what we call a fixture is uh, really nothing special. It's a, a ring lug, and the only difference is that the end of it needs to be a six gauge opening, 
six gauge wire opening because that's the, the size of the probe. There's a piercing set screw inside this probe tip that actually secures it nice and tight into the lug itself. But there's nothing special about the lug. Again, uh, we use tin plated copper, um, but there's nothing special about it. We just want it to fit, you know, snugly, uh, fit snug so that um, the heat will transfer to the probe itself. There are other accessories associated with um, this product. Uh, one being the high temperature probe. The high temperature probe is a about 11 inch segment of a, a fiber um, like this one, but it has extra insulation on top of it. So it allows the fiber, whereas the normal fiber is rated for 120C, the high temperature probe is rated for 160C. So what that does is allow you to get um, the plastic fiber further away from the heat source. So of course, it, then we don't want it to melt. If a delta T calculation is desired, um, we do have a solution to measure ambient. So there's two types of ambient um, connectors, if you will. One is uh, a, a curved uh, ambient holder for inside the equipment, and one is a standoff for um, perhaps on the profile of the equipment, stand off the profile of the equipment. So you know what's going on inside the equipment, it's what's going on outside of the equipment. We also have another accessory called the Modbus current sensor. And what that does is it behaves like a, um, a split core CT, but it connects, it attaches to the secondary of a primary CT and you would do your um, full scale amp notification inside the web page of the unit itself. But what it does is it allows for the, the correlation between current and temperature. So the Modbus current sensor would be calculating current and the temperature would be measuring temperature. And those two values would actually be logged inside the unit itself together. So when you download the data and you extract it and you put it down on your, on your laptop, then you could easily see uh, a trend on what the current is doing in relationship to the temperature. So let's talk applications. Obviously, um, there are a lot of different pieces of equipment and that are carrying um, current. And as we know, increasing current increases the temperature. So what we want to talk about is where the most important uh, points are within different pieces of electrical equipment to make it uh, a viable point to monitor. So I always start out by asking, you know, what do you currently thermal scan? There are many insurance companies that require an annual thermal scan. Um, some industries that are self-insured, they maybe um, do thermal scans every three years. However, with the continuous thermal monitoring solution, you will get uh, it, again, continuously. So you will know uh, on a regular basis what's happening deep inside your asset. So for medium voltage switchgear, for example, we have determined that um, there are several points by which um, we consider a potential failure point. And that would be in uh, the field terminations, right? The cable terminations where you're already thermal scanning if you, if, if you have that program going. Um, thermal, so cable terminations, your line and loads side of your breaker, even if it's on the run back, it's okay. Uh, a PT rollout compartments. Uh, maybe your main bus entrance, um, maybe, uh, or your main breaker entrance and your main bus and the equipment. Transformers, for example, on the secondary side of your transformers. Uh, medium voltage um, switch um, MCC, perhaps on the T leads uh, and main bus. Um, contactors, you know, any moving components, any moving locations. Uh, we always like to get medium voltage drives is a completely different um, story. There are, you know, hundreds and hundreds of voltage connections in, in medium voltage drives. One way we like to really look at it is those points by which um, have the either hidden or they have the potential to get hot. So, um, so we do look at those. Um, there's probably upwards of 36 points per medium voltage drives uh, depending on who manufactures it, uh, that would be uh, a, a very interesting point to, to obtain. 
um, we call it a point of interest too. In low voltage uh, equipment and switch gear, for example, uh, it is often hard to get a thermal scan on a riser of, of uh, cable connections from low voltage switch gear. So getting those cable terminations in switch gear would uh, eliminate the need to try to bob and weave behind the different connection points going to the different um, uh, low voltage breakers. So those, uh, those cable chimneys are definitely in the way. So, um, so getting those monitored would be great. Uh, low voltage motor control, again, this can route um, with power cables and, and comm cables. So, uh, so anywhere within the low voltage equipment uh, could easily be monitored as well. In recent years, I've been asked questions like, you know, where do I install them? Do I install them on all bolted connections? And um, in this in this day and age, really, it's it's anywhere that has a human interaction, human contact to it, or um, inaccessible, or locations that are kind of be hidden, either from real estate constraints where your equipment is up against a wall, or in situations where. Um, you know, that human contact is going to be there. We want to try to um, really take those those points that might have some extra vibration issues, some points that, um, again, are covered with barriers um, or have that uh, cable terminations um, in locations like this. I've also um, recently have been much more involved in medium voltage drive applications. These drive applications out in the sun, on the sun, in summer, um, it gets in these extreme heat locations. It's very important to monitor locations like that so um, as to catch that impending rise in temperature. So some typical applications in medium voltage switch gear, we see um, line and load uh, on the breaker stabs or on the, the uh, run backs of the breaker. We see them on PT rollouts. We see them um, located in the main bus chamber. Um, we see them obviously in the field terminations, perhaps shipping splits as well. Those are all, um, some of those are locations that, you know, have that human human contact to it. But also in, in MCCs, the um, field terminations, the contactors um, in switch gear, um, again, really uh, tight locations, um, trying to get there. There's no, uh, it, there's no size constraint on the lug or what we call fixture on this. It just has to have a six gauge wire opening because that's the size of the probe. But you can use rings, you can use um, you know, quarter inch rings, three eighths rings, half inch rings, or, um, or heck, I've seen people use uh, thermal tape to tape it in place. There are so many, there's so many different solutions so let's talk about the uh, embedded web page for a minute. Um, we chose not to integrate uh, or to develop a software for this product because we felt like it was the best product to be integrated in to one's own system, um, power management, DCS, or what have you. So what we did is we embedded a web page inside the module itself. That way, all the setup could be done there the data extraction could be done there. Um, but most importantly, the setup of your alarms can be done there. So there's two sets of alarms, a primary and a secondary set of alarm. So a primary would be one where perhaps you would lower the alarm level as opposed to uh, maybe a load, your, it's not as critical, and you would keep that one perhaps at 90 and 105, which are the default values. Um, but logging the temperature, and, and doing the setup in here is important, but not as important as making sure that the alarms are set up to, to warn you or, or warn the system that, that the temperature is rising. So we always recommend marrying the temperature and a current with that circuit on the same trend screen. So you can visually see that escalation together because we would expect a linear relationship between temperature and, and current. So if you see a temperature um, uh, escalating with stable current, that would be a red flag that would need to be checked out. But going back to um, the, the HSM embedded web page, 
The things that uh, could take place in, inside the setup are, for example, um, you enabling that relay, that relay, normally open relay that we talked about, that can be enabled inside uh, inside the web page as well. So if you have a critical load, you could actually close, check the checkbox to close um, that on that particular point, that particular channel coming in, and maybe not others that might not be as critical. So um, so setting the, the alarms is, is crucial, but also getting the notification that you have an alarm and, and, and having that uh, visibility is paramount to the continuous monitoring, temperature monitoring process and product in general. I also want to talk to you about the concept called dark fiber. This is a situation where uh, a shutdown happens either on schedule or not on schedule, and uh, you have the opportunity to install um, the fiber because the equipment is de-energized. Um, we highly encourage take this opportunity to, um, to install the fiber, get it routed up into your low voltage compartment. And that way, when you do have to energize, the, the system is ready to go and we don't have to worry about maybe taking the time to install the electronics at this time. So uh, we typically have fiber on hand all the time. So uh, it, to call us up and say, we need it because we have a shutdown, it's only gonna be down for a few days, um, would be a great opportunity to also get this product in there. Then we can come back and install the electronics and do the setup and all that at a later date. But it's not as, as, as critical to get the electronics in as it is to get this, uh, the probes attached uh, inside the high voltage areas. And finally, I do want to talk about um, the fact that uh, the IEEE PCIC committee has um, approved a PAR, which is a project um, for us to develop a continuous, a guide for continuous thermal monitoring for switchgear motor control centers below 52 kV. So um, uh, hopefully this has piqued an interest to you and um, you can read more about the um, general requirements of the application, considerations, system requirements, and then you can develop your own thoughts of where and how you want to monitor uh, your critical assets. <music>